This episode of the Pointless Talks podcast was sponsored by Word Ziggy. Word Ziggy is a PC gamer who live streams via Twitch.tv and is currently running a game giveaway on his Twitch channel. Check out his live stream and enter for your chance to win one of the four games available. Follow him on Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Word Ziggy. To watch his live streams, you can check him out on Twitch every week, Wednesdays through Friday, 7 p.m. to 10.30 p.m., and Saturdays from 5 p.m. till. Again, it is Word Ziggy. It's W-U-R-Z-I-G-G-Y. Check him out whenever you get a chance. Fly a fair nation. Fly a fair nation. Thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. This episode is produced by Fly a Fair Nation and recorded at the Fan Production House. So, hey, I'm back. <laughs> this past weekend was Pride Weekend, and I'm late recording this also. It's not even just I'm just dropping it late. I'm late recording as well. It is Pride Weekend in South Florida, I'm guessing. Wynwood Pride, all that good stuff was going on. Another South Florida Pride event that I did not attend. I think on the last episode, I misspoke and said that it was Wynwood Pride and Wilton Manor's Pride. I knew that sounded weird, but I fact-checked after the fact, and it was too late anyway, so I just let it rock. But Wynwood Pride was this past weekend, the 22nd, 23rd, whatever. A couple days lineup, and those I actually was getting notifications for, but I had already made plans for Sunday um (laughs) judge not lest you be judged and yeah so I ended up not going it it the lineup was interesting it just seems like it was just a lot of hispanic based performers that I saw in the emails that I got maybe there were other things there but that's just what I saw there was an event called daddy issues that I was just like um okay whatever but it was a bunch of things that was going on um I instead of going to Pride was at Staggering with Twin. We are not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. At first, I I low key joked around saying, "Yo, you should be ashamed." And I mistyped, and she said, "I'm." She's glad I said shamed instead. But whatever. I'm okay. I I saw a picture of my mom. I don't know if she was at Pride or what, but my cousin sent me a picture of my mom with um two drag queens, and I was just like, huh. And then it just kind of like triggered a thought to me, like. I've never really heard her say anything bad about lesbianism, lesbianity, lesbianity, whatever, about two girls involved. And like the only distaste I've ever experienced her was, you know, my failure to choose uh, between male or female or whatever. And like I've heard her speak negatively on fellatio, but that was where it was concerned. It was like children in school, like on the school bus, because there's a news report about something like that. But I've never heard her say anything bad about cunnilingus. Like, I don't know. Like, that picture, I don't know why it triggered so many thoughts for me. I was just like, hmm. And then it just kind of, like, came back full circle where I was just like, but she had an issue with me being bi or just felt like I needed to make my mind up. And I can see, like, how so many, like, situations happen, like, with bisexual people where they don't feel accepted either in heterosexual lifestyle like by heterosexual people or by like people in lgbtq community and it's like it's a lot of biphobia going on and people hear that and they don't they don't believe that it's a thing and it really is because i mean i feel like i've talked about this before but you know lesbians don't want to date women that are taking dick and for some reason gay men don't want to date men that are having sex with women and Then on the other side, straight people don't want to have sex with people that are having sex with like the same gender. And it's just it's just a lot of biphobia and shit. And it's just like, dog, just let (laughs) as long as they're clean and they're not cheating on you. That's all you really need to worry about in real life. But that's just me. Um, Then also, interestingly enough, um, that also ties into like transphobia, because that's another (laughs) letter in the alphabet that there's within the community there's prejudice against trans people which is wild to me because I I don't know what I saw I was watching something and they said that oh I'm penis gay or some shit like that and I was just like so you wouldn't date a trans man and I was just like okay what ah that's what it was (laughs) I was watching tales of the city that's why and the um there's a trans man in there and he was at a gay club I think he was at some club or whatever he was talking to this guy and they said something about you know oh so and so dates da 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 but oh I don't have anything against that but I'm I'm penis gay and I was just like huh okay and same thing with the lesbian community like there are 
women that would not date like identify as a lesbian and will not date trans women and vice versa but whatever and then it makes it like they have to identify as queer or something but they don't have to you don't have to identify as anything if you don't want to in real life don't let anyone think make you think that you have to identify as anything but it's that's the umbrella term as we've said before in the past like queer is the umbrella term you don't want to identify as one specific thing or whatever the case is box yourself in and I see that like I'm like rambling (laughs) but I see so many instances like the few interactions I've had with people of trans identity or people who are in relationships with people of trans identity where even in the show like that's really what like triggered it for me because that show like touched on it touched on a lot y'all should watch that movie show is a series it's on netflix y'all should really watch that because that shit covers so much like it talks about everything from being a woman dating a trans man like from before they started transitioning before they realized they wanted to trans or whenever before they decided to take action to transitioning and then it talks about like from his side like how he felt going through the transitions how he was in love with this girl and then he starts like after his testosterone and everything like he's going through the motions of transitioning and then he finds himself starting to be attracted to the same gender like being attracted to men like and he even said like all his life he never you know what i'm saying like found men attractive and now after transitioning he is finding himself attracted to men so it it just it it was a mind fuck because i've heard of that before and i've never like actually looked into it and it's something I still haven't looked into but I was like yo that is wild because I know women who are trans find themselves like being attracted to women now like after never even like looking twice at a woman except for oh tits because you know gay guys like tits and then you transition and then now it's like "Mm, I want to do more than just be friends in in the locker room with you you know so I don't know if that's like I don't know I feel like I have a theory on that but I'm not gonna speak on that theory just yet because <laughs> I don't want to sound too too ignorant but I just thought that was really really interesting that they touched in that but um yeah Tales of the City you guys should watch it it's pretty freaking awesome it's staged in like San Francisco so I mean it's a great contrast because oh my god didn't I just talk about like Pose like I'm watching like all this gay shit (laughs) this season and my Netflix is suggesting LGBTQ stuff so that's making it even more like overflow for me because I'm just like oh my god I'm done with this hey what next and I'm just like ah okay more gay shit (laughs) but yeah there's all of that and um there was a part in it oh my god like the whole premise of it that got me was the (sighs) the struggle you know what I'm saying like I see that, like, some people live their lives day to day as they see fit. They don't try to, they don't come outside of the lines of, you know, everyday people and everybody else's life or anything like that. They live their life for them. And if it's working, it's working. If it's not, they find a way through and they push through and they make shit happen. In the show, I'm probably, spoiler alert, I might kill it. But I'm I'm talking about a lot about this. But there's this idea behind it where it's like, and it's something that, oh my God, I'm rambling. I know it. Okay. So I don't want to kill it for nobody that hasn't watched it yet. That's my thing. Like if you haven't watched it, like pause this and <laughs> go binge watch it right now and come back. But there's the whole premise of it is that this lady, instead of like standing 10 toes and fighting a good fight and like standing up with like people in the same, like, in the same struggle as her because she wasn't experiencing that struggle basically okay she's passing she's a trans woman she's passing and nobody suspects her to be trans woman granted the area that she's in there's a lot of trans women and they're getting discriminated against and they're out here fighting a good fight like trying to get equality equal rights all that good stuff meanwhile nobody looks twice at her because they think she's just an average cisgendered woman when in in general like in actuality in real life she's a trans woman so she you know i'm saying gets whatever whatever she goes on with her life passing she instead of standing with them she goes on to live her life as a passing woman and doesn't like disclose her shit to anybody because unless you know you don't know you know what i'm saying so 
it makes me think about like people like you know how they always say that lesbians have it easier or like whatever the case is or you know tops like men that are like more um masculine presenting or whatever they have it easier than like bottoms and like feminine presenting men or like you know like more effeminate men stuff like that they have it easier than them and it's like they don't they don't necessarily identify with the struggles of being gay or lesbian or whatever because same thing like feminine lesbians you know like in doms or whatever like they don't necessarily have to deal with the struggle of their identity because they appear to be quote-unquote normal to society you know and it's like you don't want to and my take on this was she didn't want to ruffle any feathers and make her life harder than it actually was because in reality she was kind of living the good life she was living the dream basically you know like you want to pass you want to be accepted by the society you want to be you know welcomed you want to be like quote-unquote normal but at what cost like do you want that at the cost of being passing do you want that at the cost of like nobody knowing that you are trans or gay or lesbian or bi or whatever like do you want that piece as that or do you want equality for everybody (laughs) you know so that's what it comes down to like equality for everybody and I feel like that goes a long way with a lot of shit you know what I'm saying like even with like being black and light-skinned and mixed or whatever like you can pass for white like that term passing it gives people like fucking pass but it gives people like this ignorance sometimes or even like this guilt for having such good like luck or whatever the case is where you don't have to directly deal with the struggle yeah you know oh yeah man you know my friend is going through this but I didn't have to go through that because I look like this or I you know what I'm saying I carry myself this way so that was like a really big thing to me and considering this is pride month <laughs> I just wanted to shed just a little bit of light on that because yeah you feminine women who you know you're lesbians, you're big old stinking dykes, <laughs> and <laughs> you don't deal with any of the prejudice that comes with, oh, why are you, why do you, I mean, yeah, you do if people know, but if nobody knows that you're a lesbian, you go about your life every day, like, whatever, you know what I'm saying, you go out your house, and you go about your business, you go to work, you go to school, you go party, whatever, and nobody bothers you, because you look socially acceptable for your gender, or whatever the case is, whereas, a masculine presenting woman doesn't get that same ease. You know what I'm saying? Like they walk out the house and it stares and people look at them a kind of way. You go into stores, people look at you a kind of way, like, you know, and some people even say shit because (laughs) even if you're walking with friends, people say dumb shit to you because of what you look like, what they assume you to be, what, you know what I'm saying? And homophobia is still real. Like transphobia is (laughs) still very fucking real. Like, all of that shit is still very fucking real and just because you appear to not fit into any of those categories that is being prejudiced against does not mean that you're not a part of it does not mean that you shouldn't still shed light and want equality and awareness to be like you know a thing and I keep saying visibility is vital like because it is because the more people see this the more they will not think that it's some random you know fucking needle in a hay well not needle but like a random straw in a haystack you know it's it's real it's there it's not a phase for everyone some people do it because they have nothing better to do with their time or they're trying to find themselves or whatever the case is some people go through it and don't some people appear to might find interest or you know because I feel like everybody's a little bit gay sometimes or has like (laughs) an inclination to curiosity for the most part if you want to be intellectual about that but I just I just want people to be treated equally and fairly like if you don't like anybody don't like anybody that's me I don't like anybody whether you're black white skinny tall short fat gay straight I don't care I don't like anybody but don't pinpoint a certain group of people and be nasty to them because of who they are like that's that's always just been wild to me you know like just (sighs) let people live their fucking lives like that's always what it comes down to just let people live their lives if it's not directly impacting yours it's not negatively affecting you and the people you love like just let people live you know but I just think that that's wild like the choices that people make like to know that yo 
my friends like and my thing is she called these people her friends like these are my friends and instead of you you know what i'm saying like but whatever y'all watch the show like just watch the show i think at the end of the day people also like they don't look at the bigger picture like when you're in a situation like that they don't look at the bigger picture and say hey yeah this is easier for you and you come from a small town and you aren't used to you know fighting this fight you're used to passing you're used to having things easy or whatever the case is it's not necessarily your place to hold it against them it would be nice if you stand up with them if you see something bad happening which you know i'm saying i'm here for that don't necessarily go seek out trouble but also don't shelter yourself because you know people might not like who you are if you don't shelter yourself you get me like i'm the type of person that feels like if you're gonna like me you're gonna like me for who I am if you don't like me you're not gonna like me because of who I am I don't want you to like me for who you think I am or for an image that I portray that isn't me I don't I'm not the type of person to pretend so if I'm saying something this is how the fuck I feel <laughs> you know what I'm saying like if I'm saying something like I, and sometimes I don't say shit because I just don't want to be a complete asshole sometimes or I'm just like considerate of people's feelings but I'm not gonna lie to you I'm not gonna sugarcoat shit I'm not gonna hold your hand and like treat you like you know you're a fucking child if you're an adult I'm gonna hold you accountable for your actions and like I'm that's the type of person I am people think that's confrontational but I'm I'm not really like an in-your-face kind of person like I'm not gonna just come at people just out the blue like all hard and like fucking like wild and shit but I will let you know, like, yo, that's not cool. Like, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's up? But even with that being said, like, regardless of any of that, like, I'm the type of person, like, some people will be like, oh, she's a fucking bitch. Like, da 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 And some people like, yo, she's stupid. Like, she's a fucking clown. And it just goes to show that, like, some people, no matter how long of an interaction you have with them, a lot of the times, whether it's work or school or platonic or it's a friendship or relationship, People have a tendency to remember the bad things that happen. Like, no matter how much good happens, you don't get praises for the good shit. But something bad happens, you misspeak or you, you know what I'm saying, you do something or whatever. Whatever the case is, regardless of intent, the bad thing is what usually leaves, like, a stain on people. And it's shitty. It really is shitty. But I'm also, I'm really not the type of person to, like, want praise for doing what I'm supposed to do for being a decent human being (laughs) you know like I've never been that type of person like even like at work or in school I don't need like a gold star good job or (laughs) my stickers and shit like I'm not that type of person like I come here to do this I do this I get the results I'm supposed to get because I did this and I carry my ass home and carry on with my life. And it's the same thing within life, like with friendships. Like I don't try to be a good friend. Like I don't go out of my way to be a good friend to people. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'm doing something genuinely nice for you, it's because I genuinely want to do it. I feel that I should do it and I'm doing it because I feel the urge to. It's not because I want a reward or because I want you to be like, oh, her pointless man oh she's a good fucking friend like that's a good person right there like I don't honestly I don't give a fuck about that you know like I really don't care about shit like that and some people some people do and I've I've come across so many people who they want to be the great friend they want to be the the dependable person they want to be the person that people can look to and you know whatever the reason is behind that that's I mean go you I'm not here to judge anyone but me specifically I personally I'm not here for that and like I said before, if you like me, you like me. If you don't, you don't. And I don't feel no type of way about that because as I keep saying, everybody ain't for everybody. Everything ain't for everybody. Like I might not be a cup of tea. You might not like tea. You might need to acquire some taste. <laughs> but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just it's whatever. I just I just want people to be happy. Like live your life to make you happy. Don't be out here trying to like change who you are for people. And if someone says something about you that you don't necessarily like, if it's true and you want to work on it, work on it. If it's not true, then don't pay it no fucking mind. Like y'all be letting human beings, like other human beings, the same fucking skin, bone, flesh, blood, like y'all be letting these same motherfuckers fuck y'all up and y'all not even related to these people like it's not even people that like are permanent fixtures in your life you know what i'm saying so it's like i don't even know how i got here 
honestly don't even know how I got here. But, you know, just make better choices for yourself. Um, the only other thing I have on this docket is how Ding Dong got married. And just after I finished talking about how Jamaicans give the best compliment, and that is that is comedy. It is it is sarcasm, satire. It is it is everything wrapped in one, but it is also the fucking truth. Jamaicans give the best like compliments they give the best backhanded compliments sometimes too and sometimes you get a compliment from a jamaican and you'd be like nigga what like what what just about like that? like you know but as a jamaican i know how to look at these things and be like okay i understand what you're trying to say and i understand that you think that that is a compliment even though it might not be but same way so it's funny to me but he remixed good thing them for the wedding for their wedding song and change it to a good wife and i'm like but huh have you had another wife before mr dong sir like i explain Ex- explain this to me but i don't know i thought i was cute i love seeing jamaican men like happy and in love and affectionate and things like that that really like i was here for that you know and it's beautiful you don't see it that often yeah you see like one or two of the artists and they get married and them do them thing or whatever like idonia got married and him and his wife they looked real happy and all that stuff together ding dong i think oh my god it was so cute he got like fireworks outside because she said she want fireworks yo and i was just like oh but i like seeing that because there's such this bad stigma and i'm <laughs> I am guilty of portraying the stigma also against Jamaican men where they just cut and dry and they just rough. <laughs> and it's not that they intend to be. It's not that they try to be. It's just, that's just how we are. The women are the same way too, though. Like we rough same way. So, so it's like, it works for those who it works for, but it's nice to see like an affectionate, romantic, softer side of the Jamaican man like that that touched me i like that you know what i'm saying because at the end of the day whatever they do outside of that is their business but that portrayal of like love and the celebration of them and each other like that was fucking dope to me that was beautiful and a lot of people are saying how <laughs> them never even was a ding dong of oman much less him <laughs> engage and i was like that's not your business the man is the artist like you know his music you you know the song that he remixed to f- sing for his wife that's so he's doing his fucking job like not everybody needs to know what's going on in your business sometimes the best way to keep your situation prosperous is to keep it between you and the person that you're with you know what I'm saying don't put everybody in your business because sometimes some people get in there and then other people come in our business and next thing you know you're something my up and not even necessarily because of other people but because you let people in and then they get into your head and you know just fuckery but congratulations to him and i think that is all i have for this week so oh staggering okay we want to talk about staggering let's talk about staggering a little bit so yesterday was staggering cooler fit i have never been to a staggering cooler fit i've been to other cooler fits but this one i went to for the first time it was okay I don't have no, like, crazy feelings about it. I think, okay, I'm not going to say that. It was okay. Staggering was okay. The music, I feel like my liquor made me dance more than the music did because nothing ever really hold me as, uh, except for them play like a job job. Okay, I can give Dream Team this, okay? They are not afraid to play small island music. They're not afraid to play, like, new soca or like other you know like calypso or um jab jab or whatever and i am here for that then play like a dance hall too and you know they they mix it up i give them all the credit for that they hold the vibes whatever i don't know who that was i was opening for them don't do it again i am not a dj however every time i hear a certain dj dj it makes me think that i need to go into the profession i need to get a serato i need to get you know some turntables or whatever i need to get some stuff i need to get some crates together and start doing my scratches because some of y'all don't know what the fuck a transition is some of y'all don't know how to properly transition some of y'all instead of jockeying the disc y'all are hopscotching the disc and y'all jump from one song to the next song from era to era from this kind of rhythm to this kind of like i'm not saying y'all should run rhythm segment all the way through i'm not saying that but sheesh a little uniformity if i'm slow whining 
right? I mean, I want to start a job, like, <laughs> you know, like, y'all don't ease into nothing. Like, some of y'all just be, chick, 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 like, just all over the place. And that shit just broke my vibes. <laughs> you know, like, that that can really fuck up a vibe. That can, even if you're playing sucky fucking songs, you can hold a vibe if you know how to mix it properly, right? Even if it's songs that people don't really, eh, it's some old songs, whatever. But if the vibe, like, if y'all know how to, bring in the next one and send out the last one and dog like yo ooh, ooh, just work on it man because next thing you know pointless is gonna be dj and pointless sounds what's up look for me <laughs> you know because i uh, i can't and i'm not saying that about dream team don't get it twisted that's not who i'm talking about dream team i'm here for dream team i follow dream team from years now so i'm not you know what i'm saying i'm not saying that about dream team but and it's not even just about the djs that were at staggering i'm just talk, that just triggered something because parties in past in times i just be like dog what are y'all wait, how, how did you reach here how did you get here how did you get here mr dj person how 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 tell me how who sent you here you know and i don't have the answer so yeah <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm done talking shit. <laughs> we have events coming this weekend and upcoming months. Your fan fest is July 20. Y'all need to buy y'all tickets to come celebrate my birthday. It is not July 20, but it is that weekend or the week the, after the weekend. Whatever. Anyways, come to um your fan fest, July 20, Luxurious Banquet Hall. Tickets are online. You can get them on flyfairnation.net. Um, you can get them on Eventbrite. They are there. And of course, Dutch Olympics. Dutch Blood Clot Olympics. Dutch Olympics. Dutch Olympics is this Saturday. If you're listening to this episode between June, <laughs> what is this, 24th to June 29th, get your tickets now, okay? Ladies free with RSVP before 1230, I believe. I don't know how many of those tickets are left, but they are running out fast. I'm <laughs> getting the emails like, yo, not come in. So get your tickets, get your tickets, get your tickets. Um, the early bird tickets are still on sale until those run out as well. Them they have fly with too because the men are getting their discounted tickets. Make sure you get your tickets. They are on Eventbrite as well. And also on Fly Fair Nation, it is Dutch Olympics spelled same way, D-U-T-T-Y-L-Y-M-P-I-C-S. Rum punch tickets are on sale. What is it? Men is $20. Women, if y'all don't get the free before, it's uh, $15 online. It's going to go up at the door. And if the tickets run out also, um, unlimited rum punch $60 tickets are also available. So, yeah, get your tickets. Ziki Danagadere, Tahiri W, Delhi Fever. Vincent, you know, Dagamasta, like enough people. Enough, enough, enough people. Encore sounds, Iron Heart Sound, Rock Steady, A Chinks. The whole crew. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Yeah. Buy a ticket, get your ticket. Thank you for listening. Um, you know, if you know anybody who has poetry, stories, short stories, or anything that they want read on the show, you can send it in, have them submit it. The email is askpointless at gmail.com. That is A S K P O I N T L E S S S at gmail.com. Also, don't forget to listen, like, share, subscribe, and share with a friend. We are available on all of the platform things. We are on Spotify. Tune in radio, Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, YouTube, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts. I said that already, right? <laughs> um, check us out on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, all of the fun things. If you like us, rate us, give us five stars. Keep on a bad man feelings them to on yourself because sometimes we like for selling up on somebody all. And despite all of that, whether you got here on purpose or by fate, Thank you again for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast.